Hello everyone and happy card number three day today for June Jacobs virtual stamp party. I'm excited to bring uh, kind of a brighter card to the mix of the fall ones that I've been doing for her and such. So um, I'm just going to wait for a couple more of you to pop on and um, get my iPad going so that I can see comments and such. So that always helps me to know that um, that my camera's working right and everything too. So, hi Julie, thanks for joining in. And so, um, something that I'm going to use today is uh, the Glimmer, no, gl Rainbow Glimmer Paper um, in the catalog. And so with that, um, you know, there's always those products that I think we all kind of miss and so um, the glimmer paper, the rainbow glimmer paper is one of them. So we've all used kind of the uh, gold, the silver, um, and just the plain like white and iridescent and things like that too. So all of a sudden I started to see these um, fun projects with these rainbow kind of mixed uh, gl glimmer papers. And I thought, where is that from? So I see June's on and she's the hostess and one of her guests, Missy's on too. And hi Lois. So we've got some numbers joining us. So this is what I'm talking about, this rainbow glimmer paper and so um yeah also i thought how are people coloring their glimmer paper and trying to figure that out so i also love the mix too of uh, that there's a lot within a sheet um as far as the gradient of it so that you can um it's not too busy um but yet that that you can get a lot of colors off of one sheet too so hi shelly thanks for joining in so um, with a package of this, you get two sheets of the, um, two sheets in a package of the 12 by 12 sheets there too. So now you're probably wondering, all right, Belle, stop talking about that. Show us the card that June's going to have for her party today. So this is the sample that I made using that rainbow glimmer paper. And so what's kind of fun is I made this card for the sample, but then what I'm going to make today for you guys is using a different piece or part of that 12 by 12 so that you can kind of see the difference between using one side of the paper versus another too. So I will get started with that. <clears throat> Let me get my uh, area kind of here for you little bit organized and such all right so the stamp set and I kind of laugh when I say that <clears throat> excuse me hi Linda the stamp set is called beauty of bounds and with that the only stamp I'm using today is the for you so here's the card again so you can see it the right way not reverse um, or backwards and so you can see kind of how fun it looks to have um, the shading on there. So you can tell, here's the 12 by 12. You can tell that I cut it from this corner because you can see the green kind of going into the balmy blue. And I also like to throw in, like um, a lot of the other papers that Stampin' Up! has, it also um, really does a great job of telling us Bermuda Bay, Blackberry Bliss, Granny Apple Green, Magenta Madness, Mango Melody. So you know exactly kind of what colors are in there because when I first got it, I thought, oh, I'll just kind of guess because I thought this kind of rainbow, it's like, well, anything would go, but then I'm like, of course, Stampin' Up's gonna have it coordinate super well because that is what Stampin' Up, <coughs> excuse me, does. So then the dies, that big die, I've had these dies for a long time and I've used bits and pieces from all over in there and it's the Butterfly Beauty dies from page 180 and um, I really haven't used these big dies a lot so kind of one can overlay the other but I'm just using this larger or I should say like kind of bolder image um, just because I wanted as much of that glimmer paper to show that I could and so like I said um, what I like too is lots of these little tiny um, butterflies in there so that you can um, use like several like all these little tiny ones I know I've done some cards where I just roll some of those through and I've got like a dozen butterflies in no short or in a short time in no time at all and then the stamp set here is on page 77 and there again is that beauty abounds so it was um, 
uh, originally brought to us as a bundle and so now it is sold separately in the catalog so let me show how you can make your own and I'm like I said, I'm going to set this as a, this one aside, um, and then when I'm done, I'll bring it back on so you can kind of see the difference between the two. So um, the one that I'm going to make is going to feature some peachy pink tones that way. Um, so uh, what I like about the glimmer paper though is how it pops on black cardstock. So I'm actually going to start with just a piece of the black cardstock. And um, the die is pretty large, so when I cut my piece of glimmer paper, I cut this piece four and a quarter by five and a quarter, and that will allow the die to sit on there. And you wouldn't really want to cut it any narrower or any shorter, so that's about like the perfect cut for that you'll have a little bit of scrap and then that's always fun to try and put on a card somewhere and wonder how you're going to do that or where you're going to use it and such too so hi lisa hi linda and hi beth and so um with that then um i knew that i still wanted the black so i'm going to start with my new big shot and i ran into my first kind of not problem, I'd say more like, um, hmm, something that I need to address to you guys. So um, I'm glad that it happened to me before it happens to you, like anything. So um, I wanted to use the subtle embossing folder. <clears throat> And the subtle embossing folder has kind of these like light weaves and such through there and, and it's six by six so you can kind of use it either way. Um, either design will fit across your card. But it's also, I don't know if you can tell, a pretty thick embossing folder that went well with our old machines and then you needed a different plate for that. Um, and so some of the 3D new embossing folders aren't quite this thick. So when I went to run it through and followed the directions and went with plate number four, which you should use now for the new 3D embossing folders, this was just too thick. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna play around and a lot of the layering I did, it was just too thin and it wasn't giving me anything. It would just shoot right through without any change to my cardstock. So what I did um, that I liked and won't wreck the machine is I put my cardstock in my folder and I'm just using base plate number one. And you won't find that on here because there's only, you know, so few of these. But like the tin tile I know is one that I also have that's quite thick. And there's another one too. So, um, so I'm just going to put that down and then I'm going to use number three. So this one's just thinner. So um, plate number one, plate number three, and then my really thick, dynamic, textured 3D embossing. So hopefully that will help you guys. And always call or email or text if you have any questions on that. But you can just tell I'm not pushing um, that through with a lot of force and um, I also um, like the results too. And I don't know, this is called subtle and it truly is subtle. Oh, there you can kind of see the lines. So it just kind of gives it a nice subtle look, kind of some lines and dots on there. And sometimes I even look at it like, what side do I want to use? So, um, so that is the subtle one. And I I love it just for what it does. And then next, I'm going to <clears throat> load up my cutting plates like I normally would. So with that, I'm using plate number one and then plate number two, and then I wanna get a cutting pad down. And this is where I'm going to lay that rainbow glitter or glimmer paper. And I kinda sometimes after this goes through a few times, it wants to just kinda pop up a little bit. So I'm just gonna uh, maneuver that a little bit and then I'm going to put the second plate number three on top of there like so and then just run that through so I'm just gonna do this actually I'm gonna kind of move it a little bit because um, the rubber feet are only on my paper and then it wants to move because of that so I kind of went back and forth a couple times because there is whoops excuse me my hip it, the handle. Um, there is a lot of detail to this and so you can see um, that there is a lot of detail to that. So then um, 
since I sent it through that way, um, back and forth and then straight um, angled, then what I kind of like to do is kind of put it at, um, like the first time was at, just kind of kink it so it's a little bit more of an angle. I feel like it looks good, like it got a really good cut, but um, also it's my time to tell you, hey, if you have a die that sometimes maybe if you're using an older cutting pad that it just doesn't want to cut through very well, then you'll have an idea of what to do. And yes, I flipped it upside down. So there again, sometimes just doing that and that could give you a different type of pressure too. So I feel very confident and good that all of these little pieces are gonna come out easy because I can see some really deep cuts in there. So I'll set aside my big shot and then <clears throat> I will take my take your pick die brush Actually, I'm gonna just get rid of all these extra pieces. Like I said, you know me, I'll keep them and then wonder why I'm keeping them or maybe I'll find some uh, fun thing to do with it and then you'll go, oh, that's why we should keep our little pieces and scraps. But I do actually have another idea and I was kind of torn between what I was gonna do today for June's party and I had two ideas using this fun glimmer paper. But you guys, um, I got a new hostess, so that means more cards that I get to make virtually for you guys coming up. And then it's September, so I'll be back on my stamp camp schedule, which I'll be doing uh, September cards virtually too. So you can plan on a pretty full month for the month of September. So I have a lot of those little pieces out, so I'm just going to now poke. Um, so then, yes, yeah, so getting back to the glimmer paper, look for a different card, probably the other one that I might have done for June's party, um, using some more of the glimmer paper pieces too. So um, I don't want to tear this. So I probably did such a, a great job of cutting that it wants to just stay right in there. So... Um, and sometimes you can use dryer sheets or whatever too. But um, the nice thing is like most of this pops right out just because of the size. So I'm trying to get it in the camera, but maybe what I'll do is just hold it close to me. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> okay, so um, now we have all of those little pieces poked out. And I have some customers whose name is Kathy, that loves to poke things out. So I think of her as I'm poking out the little tiny details. She says she could just sit and watch TV and poke out all those little things. She loves to do that. Okay, so I have this now on the black and you can just see how the brightness of that uh, glimmer paper just really pops on there. And then, then I come to the uh, decision of, do I want that black to be on Mango Melody, which really um, highlights some of this tone, or would it be kind of more fun to take the black and do it on that brand new in color, um, the magenta uh, tone of that too. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do pink. So hopefully June agrees, but you can, you can already tell that some people are probably gonna get my granny apple green that I showed on my sample versus this. So um, next what I'm going to do then is just tack down my black embossed piece. And I cut that um, 3.75 by five. I had to think about that because I wanted um, more of a thick edge and matting on there to kind of highlight this because this is bolder. And so I liked that more of my pink showed um, underneath my black. <clears throat> and then to adhere this on, what I'm going to do is just use some glue dots. And with this, glue dots are your friends. So I'm just gonna put kind of like one on each corner. Um, even though it's a pretty big piece, um, it's not like it has to have an overload of stickiness or glue or adhesive. So um, I'm really confident in just putting on a few and I feel like if I cut um, or capture all four of the corners, then I should um, have it covered as far as um, getting it caught maybe in an envelope or something as you're putting it in. So, and then I'm gonna put one more right in the middle, okay. So then we have, I'm just getting rid of a couple little fibers like so. 
now we have this like so. So I'm just pushing down where all those glue dots are. Okay, so then this is another one of those projects so, uh, where you can kind of go, wow, now what? So with um, this card that I showed you as my sample, I almost went with that new, um, it's from the suite with the whale paper punch and such. So this is Sheer Ribbon in Bermuda Bay. So sometimes I show you that just so that I'm not swaying you to buy something new. If you already have this, then you might go, okay, that'll work um, for that. And then another thing that would work for the card that I made today um, is the In Color Ribbon, the uh, Magenta, the Magenta Madness um, Girl Grain Ribbon. So that would work really well with that too. And then um, the other one, even though it's kind of lighter, it still kind of captures some of that mango melody and the yellow. And this is the ruched ribbon from, uh, it debuted in the last catalog, but it's still in this one, and it's Daffodil Delight. And so that's an option too for this card. But I tell you what I fell in love with is this new ribbon. And um, so of course that's what I'm gonna use if I just love the look of it. So it is, even though butterflies and snowflakes don't go together, today they do. Snowflake Splendor Ribbon. And so it's kind of a thicker ribbon, but look at all that iridescent shimmer shine in there. And I love that my camera actually really picked that up well. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap that around the card. And it's pretty easy to uh, tie. And you know me, I'm just gonna do a knot, nothing fancy like the bow. And I just feel like um, with the iridescent look that that's gonna be kind of fun on uh, the ribbon to carry through the shimmer shine of the paper too. So I'm just going to put that right over top, make sure that I haven't like clipped any of those butterfly wings. And I wanna make sure I'm getting my ribbon cutting scissors and I'll kind of just cut that at a little bit of an angle like so. And then we have that. So how fun is that to have that shimmer shine? So um, I'm looking forward to using this with some of my uh, Christmas and snow projects too. But like I said, if you think, oh, you know, maybe it's a little too blue versus iridescent, well, then you could always, if you want to capture something, you could go with uh, a couple of the other choices too. Um, but here again, I wanna show you kind of side by side how that ribbon looks when I use the different part of that paper too. So that's how that looks. And then I want to follow through with a sentiment. And like I said, there's a few sentiments in the stamp set. So I could have went with even hello. And I love this one. Like our friendship isn't one big thing. It's a lot of, um, it's a million little things or a friend is someone who chooses you out of a whole world of people. So some really nice sentiments. Um, and I like that even though it's cursive, it's very easy to read. I'm just using the for you today because a lot of you like just really simple sentiments. So I'm going to ink up the for you just with some black ink. And I'm going to stamp that on some Mango Melody cardstock there. And I could do my banner punch um, just with my scissors, but why would I when I love this punch here? So this I cut um, about two and a quarter, maybe a little bit longer, um, but this for sure, the width is three fours. So that's gonna slide right kind of in that middle channel there. And sometimes I like cutting them a little bit longer just so I have a little piece that I can make sure with my finger that it's in there straight punch down and then if it doesn't want to come out, um, I found that if I just give it a little tap with my take your pick tool, then it kind of feeds it back out. And so what I'm gonna do with this, cause I want the majority of this to show, I'm just gonna take my scissor and cut a little bit more off that end, okay. And here too, because this is kind of a little bit of a rougher uh, material, I want something super sticky. So there two um, glue dots are going to be my friend. So I'm going to take and do about one, two, one on each end, and let's do one in the middle. Um, here's another one. 
and I'm gonna put that in the middle. And then I know that I'm getting a really good stick on top of this too. So, um, the, and so what I did with both of these cards kind of was just um, went to the color that's kind of in there, but not the outside, because I feel like if I did like the granny apple green on here, it almost blends a little bit too much with the background, but yeah, I kind of like that. Um, but I think this just gives your greeting a little bit more pop. And there again, you can look on the packaging of the glimmer paper to know exactly what colors are being used. So that's why I thought, well, I'll go with this, which is featured more on this side of the card to give the sentiment a little bit more of a um, pop and look there too. Thank you, Shelly. Hi, Sherry. So um, you would think that could be done, but what I'm going to do is add some bling to this. And then uh, what I did too for that is I brought out all sorts of stuff today. Can you tell I took, I shouldn't say took a little bit more time because a lot of cards take a lot of time, but I really put a lot of thought into how you could mix this up and make it your own, especially when you see once again, how many different colors are in there. So I wanted something shimmery, shiny that could match several of these different colors in the paper and such. So um, of course, course just the regular rhinestones and you can color those with the stamp and blends to make it whatever color you want that choice would be good with that and then I chose the blue adhesive back gems when I did this card here and I just learned over the weekend I did a leadership summit event with Stampin' Up um, online. It was supposed to be in New Orleans. I'm thankful because of COVID that that got canceled because there was the hurricane. So um, I learned that these adhesive back gems are one of the number one selling things in the whole holiday catalogs. So I thought that was interesting. So, so I like to plug that in because I always think people like to know. So what's the most popular thing? Okay, so what I am going to use are the champagne rhinestones here. And I like, because this is a bigger die and kind of a chunkier look, I'm going to use the larger size of those down near the bottom. So let me take, and with my take your pick, pick up some of these. Whoops, wants to stick to the tacky stuff more than anything. So I'm kind of just gonna go, there's one, and scoop that off, and there's two. I'm gonna scoot off a third one because I like to do things that are uneven. And I love how these champagne rhinestones, I often call them my chameleon rhinestones because they kind of just pick up whatever color of the project that you're using. And so that's kind of fun that way. So um, I love that it kind of just highlights kind of that mango color, but it's actually more of a petal pink color and it looks great with even soft suede and different oranges and such. So once again, those are the, the champagne um, rhinestones there. So so that's a good choice, but like I said, if you think like, okay, do I have to have blue? Do I have to have champagne? Um, just even doing these, um, you could color them with whatever you need and use just the plain rhinestones too. So I think that is it for my card. Um, and I'm just leaving it be an open card on the inside just because it can be used for any kind of um, occasion that you want with the sentiment like for you which makes it nice and easy and usable and that's always my goal when I'm making cards is to try and go okay you know let's have something usable and um, we're almost out of butterfly season so I wanted to try and do something fun with this and just yesterday or was it the day before my husband called me um, outside and said you have to look at our trees and sure enough there was a lot of monarch butterflies that were um, congregating on our trees so that was kind of fun um, so um, I was kind of worried because people said that there weren't as many monarchs but then when I saw that I thought oh yay there they are okay and here I am hi Sandy I hope you guys are on my finger just caught the 
camera on my phone and okay it looks like I'm back on after yesterday's fiasco I've never had that disconnect in a live video and I know a lot of demonstrators um, are always saying oh what do I do but um, yeah yesterday blessed enough that that's only happened yesterday I thought maybe it just happened today now but I think everybody can see me I'm just gonna sign off so it won't be like missing too much because the cards already done but that is card number three for June Jacobs virtual stamp party so as I was crafting you could see your host code on my workstation there too but now I'm going to um, take the card take a picture of it post that um, to go with it and that will have June's card and June has let me know that she would like to close up her stamp party by September 9th so if those of you that are interested in placing orders some of you have so I'm excited to um, update June too um, after I get the card up um, uploaded to let her know where her party sales are at and who is all ordered so that's kind of fun too and so if you want to order just use that code or if you have questions or concerns or want me to order for you through June's party I can help you with that too and then you'll get the three cards that I've been crafting Monday Tuesday Wednesday so that's how that works but just she asked if you could place your orders by September 9th because I think June's probably pretty excited to get her wish list um, whittled down with things that she wants that she'll be earning with her host rewards and then tomorrow I will be back again um, probably afternoon maybe not this late um, but I'm, I'm going to start in with some more projects um, I'll start tomorrow with card number one out of my September stamp camp um, offering where I'm going to craft 10 cards online so you'll be able to start seeing those so uh, Thursday and Friday I will do those cards and uh, next week I have a new host Hostess, and so I just started her host code and that is Sandy Torgerson and she's from Jackson so if you're um, wanting to see some inspiration through hers I'll do those so I'm kind of going to kind of break up my September stamp camp that way uh, my hostesses aren't waiting too long and I still have room so if any of you are thinking that you want to try this virtual crafting experience um, it's always a good time and I've got lots of ideas so um, I'm pretty excited that I get to share them with you this way too. So um, as always, let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, have a great day. See you tomorrow.